Let's analyze this prototype I made based on the two videos on how to activate and deactivate game objects and specific components of the game objects. Here in the corner I leave you a link to my website where you can download a Unity package with all these assets so you can import it and see how it works in your own computer. The prototype works in the following way. Here we have an object that we can control and on the other hand we have a detection object. When the first object enters this area, some actions are performed. I'm gonna split the explanation in two videos. In this first part, we're gonna see how the prototype works here in the Unity scene, components, game objects, and I'm gonna show you what you need to consider to make sure that an object can detect another one. And in the second part, we're gonna analyze the scripts and instructions. So let's start with the hierarchy. We have two disabled objects. One is an enemy that is simply a red sphere with a rigid body component assigned to it. When we are in the play mode and activate this object, the sphere appears and it falls to the ground because of the rigid body. We also have this object that has an audio source component with an audio clip. Here we see that the play on awake box is checked, meaning that the sound will be played when the object is activated. With this we're gonna practice enable specific components from the game objects. And finally we have the sign that is going to be enabled when the character enters the collider and disabled when it leaves. Let's see what is needed to make an object detect another one. Here I have a game object called Trigger Object. It has a mesh renderer and a transparent material assigned to see its boundaries. The object could be invisible and still be able to detect. The important thing here is that the detection element needs a collider in trigger mode. Here the is trigger box needs to be checked. So this object is going to detect other objects that also have a collider. Notice that if I deactivate the player's collider, enter the play mode, this object cannot detect it. And the third thing we need is that at least one of the two objects has a rigid body component assigned. Now let's talk a little about the scripts, but without getting into the code. This object that we are using as detection is going to execute a series of functions on the script that it has assigned. We are talking about the onTrigger and onCollision events. Here in this case, in the detection object, we have this script that has those functions inside. And notice the components assigned in the script, the enemy, the sign, and the audio source. This script will activate the game objects and the components. Something important to consider is that when the detection takes place, not only the onTrigger events of the script assigned to the trigger object will be executed, but also the onTrigger events of a script that could be assigned in the object that enters in the collider. In this case, we have the player object that has this script, player control. If we define the onTrigger functions within the player control script, these functions will also be executed. And to show that, I print console messages in both scripts. Notice when the object enters, there are two messages in the console. One says, I am the trigger, someone has entered, and the other message says, I am the player, I have entered the trigger. So the onTrigger event is executed in both scripts, but there is more. If we take this component, copy and paste it, imagine that you have two different scripts, both with the onTrigger functions defined. When we enter the play mode and the player enters the trigger, this message appears repeated twice, indicating that the trigger is executing the onTrigger events in both scripts. To finish, the player game object has the player tag assigned. We can use this to know if the object that enters the collider is the player or is some other object and apply different actions accordingly. That would be all for this video. In the next one, we will see the scripts and instructions that perform this behavior.